Hi, it is Sunday, March the 29th, 2015, and this is Wes Fryer. I'd like to say a couple things about education policy in Oklahoma as we are on the eve of another rally for education at the steps of our state capitol here in Oklahoma. And I think the audience for this message is really twofold. It's number one, uh, teachers who are planning to go to the rally or, or might not be going to the rally but want to be there at the rally to give our support. Um, but also uh, all our other voters and leaders in Oklahoma as we think about education and we think about the future of our state. You know, we had a rally last year for education and um, basically it didn't have an effect. I think it's great for us as teachers to share our voice and to, to make ourselves heard. But the biggest issue that we face in Oklahoma, and we've got you know symptoms of this problem, we've got the teacher shortage, we've got thousands of classroom positions right now that are not filled by certified people because we can't hire them, we can't find them. Uh, we are 48th in the nation in teacher salaries, and I will really commend to you a post that Rick Cobb, who wrote o Oklahoma Education Truths, wrote a week or so ago, breaking down how this is long running, this is historical, you know, in Oklahoma, the fact is, when you look at the money, our state leaders who are elected to the legislature do not care about public education. There may be, you know, some words they say, they, they may try to pretend, but the fact is they do not care because they do not fund public education the way that public education needs to be funded. And so as teachers go to the Capitol tomorrow and protest and, and afterwards, here's the number one issue we need to be talking about in Oklahoma when it comes to education, and that is stopping tax incentives which are leaving millions and millions of dollars on the table in Oklahoma, specifically with oil and gas. As the Oklahoma Policy Institute wrote a report this last year, there is currently a tax incentive for oil and gas drilling, which taxes any horizontal well or any well that uses horizontal drilling at 1% instead of 10%. Now, according to that Oklahoma Policy Institute report, at that time, and this may even be higher now, that accounted for 75% of all the wells that are drilled in the state of Oklahoma. Now, some of the fear when it comes to changing a tax incentive like that is that oil and gas companies are going to leave Oklahoma. They're going to abandon our state. We are not talking and we shouldn't be talking about, you know, ridiculously high taxation rates, but it is ridiculously low to tax 75% of the wells in our state at 1% and leave those millions and millions of dollars on the table and not just leave it on the table, we're giving those to our oil and gas companies. We have got to find a way in Oklahoma to be partners with our business community. And unfortunately, I think we have a long record of uh, for instance, our chambers of commerce being very confrontational and adversarial with education, basically seeing that they need to keep education down in Oklahoma so they can keep profits and keep income up. The future of our of our state relies upon education and a high highly educated workforce, and we have to have smart, uh, very capable, skilled, experienced teachers in our classrooms in order to have high quality learning. There's simply no way around that. And so what I would encourage you and I would encourage anyone listening to this message to advocate for and to start speaking out about is we need in Oklahoma fair taxation of oil and gas. We need to insist that our elected representatives in the Oklahoma legislature stand up and support fair taxation and do away with, for instance, this specific tax incentive, which is not needed. We do not need to incentivize horizontal drilling. Horizontal drilling, you know, that's the revolution along with injection wells, which has led to the shale revolution, which is why oil and gas, I checked the price this, you know, last Friday, it was like $49, $48 a gallon, or, or sorry, a barrel. Um, and we've got low gas prices. We're probably going to continue to have low oil and gas 
prices. And the dynamics here are convoluted and they're complex. But, but this is our enduring challenge. We have a culture in the state of Oklahoma where policymakers will defer to oil and gas companies and give millions of dollars in unneeded tax incentives to them and devalue education. It has been crippling our state. We are feeling it. You know, I am a classroom teacher. I teach full-time fourth and fifth grade students in our STEM program in, in Yukon, Oklahoma. It's a very unique program. Um, I have a PhD in education. I have been an educator for 19 years. But because my educational classroom experience was out of state, there would only be five years of experience that would be transferred into the state. And as Joy Hoffmeister, our new state superintendent, said at her Oklahoma Policy Forum uh, roundtable, uh, or I guess it was a public forum, a couple weeks ago, if you work for Chipotle here in the state of Oklahoma for three years, you will make more than a classroom teacher who has a doctorate, you know, in our state. Um, I, I make so little as a classroom teacher. Uh, it is abysmal. It is, it's horrible. And, you know, we have got to have experienced, skilled, passionate teachers in our classrooms. And, and we have thousands and thousands of vacancies today. Now, that vacancy might not be at your school if you're watching this. Um, I'll tell you, there's just a few blocks away, an elementary school in Oklahoma City. My, my kids all go to Oklahoma City Public Schools. And uh, there is an elementary school about five blocks away uh, that started the year with almost 30 positions empty and they still don't have those filled. They still have substitute teachers. This is a crisis. This is an emergency. This isn't a little problem. This is a gigantic problem. And I really believe when it comes to school funding and it comes to our culture politically here in Oklahoma, we have got to figure out how to partner arm in arm with our business community and how to fairly tax entities, specifically oil and gas, so that we can have these millions of dollars. See, Oklahoma is in a place really similar to some of the Gulf countries right now, um, Dubai, Qatar. These are very oil rich countries and the oil economy is not going to last forever. Uh, we do not have a highly diversified economy. We have some diversification, but not a lot. We need to be investing in education. We need to be looking at ways to diversify our economy. And what we need from leaders is courage. Because it takes courage to stand up to the oil and gas lobby, which we need to be partners with, but who had a rally themselves after our last education rally in Oklahoma, reminding policymakers of how important their role is. And their, their role is vital. Where would we be in Oklahoma without oil and gas revenue? But my closing question to have you think about is, where, would we, where can we be today if even just that one exemption for horizontally drilled wells would be done away with in our state. We should do it, we need to do it, and this is an opportunity for us to exercise our democratic freedom. See, we don't live in Saudi Arabia or in Qatar. We live in the United States of America. And that means that you and I have freedom of speech, and you and I have the opportunity to make our voices heard. Just like we're going to the Capitol as educators tomorrow, we need to be making our voices heard clearly as voters in this state. And the message we need to send to our politicians is, end the excessive tax exemptions that we have for oil and gas. Fairly tax oil and gas and let's fund public education. Let's turn this ship around so that we can make the investments we need for our children, for our communities, for our state, and for our nation. I'm Wes Fryer. You can find me on Twitter at WFryer, and I encourage you to make your voice heard. Contact your elected representatives and ask them to fairly tax oil and gas in the state of Oklahoma.